Okay, you can begin your comments, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to direct my comments firstly towards Jenny. Since Teen Talk teaches that there are more than two genders, or at least there can be, and that men can be women and women can be men, let me just say to you, Jenny, that you've got some real balls lecturing the adults out there about what it means to be mature and an adult. You see adults protect children, and they don't expose them to obscene sexual material that if it weren't for California's obscenity exemption law, which you know all about, you could be sued as well as the schools for showing this obscene behavior in any other freaking context. But because it's deemed educational, it's somehow legal. So given the type of curriculum this teaches, you've got some real balls lecturing us about maturity. Sex ed curriculum like this fits into the larger type of sexual education called comprehensive sexuality education, which Planned Parenthood has always been a huge advocate of. If you don't know the history of comprehensive sexuality education, I'd like to recite it for you, as I think it will concern you very much, and if it doesn't, I am worried for your soul. The roots of the sexual rights revolution that spawned the comprehensive sexuality education movement is all traced back to the fraudulent, disgusting research of one pervert. And I use that word quite accurately. His name was Dr. Alfred Kinsey, and I think you know who he is. In 1947, Dr. Alfred Kinsey founded the Kinsey Institute at Indiana University, which is still there, to conduct what he called, quote unquote, research into human sexuality. Kinsey believed that children were sexual from birth and had sexual rights to sexual pleasure a pervert. His hypothesis was that um, promiscuous behavior and sexual behavior was the norm among all societies and among all ages of individuals. Except, like a bad scientist, he used quote-unquote science, an overused word in the last year, to prove his hypothesis. Rather than following the facts where they lead, he wouldn't accept any other premise than that which he was already convinced was true. Most disturbing of all, Kinsey's findings were also based on the sexual abuse and rape of children by pedophiles. And you probably know Alfred Kinsey's book called Human Male, Human Sexuality in the Human Male. In Table 34 of his book, a book which if you parents purchase, keep on a high shelf away from your children, literally documents the abuse of a number of infants, toddlers, and older children who were sexually abused by pedophiles to induce orgasms that were then timed with a stopwatch over a 24-hour period. Alfred Kinsey claimed that this quote-unquote research proved that children derived sexual pleasure from their sex abuse, even if they were crying, convulsing, or screaming. Well, how does this pertain to this? Well, this type of teen talk fits within the larger type of education called comprehensive sexuality education, whose goal is to expose children to any and all forms of sexual activity, even the most dangerous. I'm a pro-life speaker. I do this professionally. I speak all around the country in schools, churches, and colleges, and my friend Monica Klein is a former Planned Parenthood sex educator who was trained by Planned Parenthood sex educators and left her job because she realized that they were not helping young people with their CSE, their comprehensive sexuality education, but were harming them. And she says that the director of sex education at Planned Parenthood told her in her training that girls were coming in with STDs as young as 10. They were coming in for abortions, even having objects removed from their bodies. Monica Klein says, I figured these girls were being abused, and so I was going to teach them how to avoid sexual situations like good sexual education would do. I wanted to protect them, she says. She, the sex educator at Planned Parenthood patted my friend Monica Klein on the knee and said, no, dear, we're not going to teach them to not be sexually active. We're just going to teach them how to do it safer. And today, Planned Parenthood, who pushes comprehensive sexuality education, believes what Alfred Kinsey believes. This is why in 1964, Dr. Mary Calderon, who's that? The former medical director for Planned Parenthood, took seed money from Hugh Hefner, one of the greatest commodifiers of women in the human body in human history, to, to found an organization called SECUS, which stands for the Sexuality, Information, and Education Council of the United States. Any guess what SECUS does today? Well, they're the number one group at the helm of promoting and writing the curriculum for comprehensive sexuality education. And of course, Health Connected Teen Talk, a euphemism if there ever was one, is approved by Planned Parenthood. Any shocker there that the organization that dehumanizes the unborn through killing them through abortion is also happy to dehumanize their future clients by encouraging them to engage in any and all forms of sexual activity, which leads to more unplanned pregnancies, uh, more unborn babies, therefore more clients for abortions, which make up over 90% of Planned Parenthood's income. Shocker. Mary Calderon once stated, the former medical director for Planned Parenthood who founded SECUS, that children Children are sexual and think sexual things and do sexual things. A founding board member of SECUS with Mary Calderon was named Wardell Pomeroy. War Wardell Pomeroy was the former director of the Kinsey Institute at Indiana University that documented the actual rape of children. In a 1980 Time Magazine article called Attacking the Last Taboo, if you'd like to look it up, 
referred to Pomeroy as part of the pro-incest lobby, and in this interview, Wardell Pomeroy toyed Time Magazine the following. He said, it's time to admit that incest need not be a perversion or a symptom of mental illness. Incest between children and adults can sometimes be beneficial. And given that Health Connected Teen Talk exposes children to any and all forms of sexual activity as healthy and normal and, and encourages them to quote unquote do it safely, how are such minors supposed to be aware of whether they're being abused or not since this curriculum mainstreams this as just quote, quote part of quote unquote health. Today Planned Parenthood believes what Alfred Kinsey taught, that children are sexual from birth and have sexual rights to sexual pleasure. So they're trying to equate sexual rights with human rights. So if human rights are natural rights, then who's the oppressor? who's trying to impede on the sexual rights of children. Well, Planned Parenthood believes it's us, the parents. This is why a common phrase amongst Planned Parenthood sex educators is, quote, parents are a barrier to service. And this comes from my friend Monica Klein, a former sex educator for Planned Parenthood, and this phrase was thrown around all the time. Parents are a barrier to service. Why? Because they know each one of you parents would never show this trash to your children in your own homes, but you'll push it on the children of this district under the veneer of health, which makes me wonder how many of you are in Planned Parenthood's pocket, the greater, dis greater greatest dehumanizer and commodifier of children. Stop this madness so and we'll much. primary every single up. one of you Your time and you is need up. to repent. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Next up we 